Hello everyone. So today we'll be taking up the daily quiz for the date 27th March 2024. So today in today's newspaper there were quite a lot of interesting articles. So the first article was on the topic environment and ecology and this was on the topic black carbon. One of the most important topic from the climate change point of view. So this article uh, was regarding the black carbon, like how black carbon affects uh, global warming, etc. So now let us take the question on this topic. So that is your black carbon emission. Which of the following statements? So the first and the question is which of the following statement is or correct regarding the black carbon emission? So black carbon emission is a type of that is a black carbon is a type of particulate matter produced from the incomplete combustion of fossil fuel. So what do you think? Is black carbon a particulate matter? So what is particulate matter? The, the tiny compound that is uh, suspended in the air or the, the tiny element that is suspended in the, in, in, the, in the air. So that is your black carbon, uh, that's your particulate matter. So is black carbon a particulate matter? What do you think? Black carbon is a particulate matter. So how does black carbon originate? So when, when the fossil fuel is not properly combusted, so what will happen? We will get black carbon. So in simple language, black carbon is the black suit that you get the black tiny particles that you get that is your black carbon so statement one is absolutely right that is black carbon is a particulate matter produced from the incomplete combustion of fossil fuel so again statement one is absolutely right so what about your statement two statement two says that it contributes that's a black carbon contributes significantly to global warming by absorbing sunlight and reducing the surface albedo so now the question is what is surface albedo so can black carbon reduce the surface albedo in simple language surface albedo means it is the amount of reflection that is surface amount of reflection of solar insulation or say solar rays if the surface albedo is very high it means that the surface will reflect a lot of solar insulation say for example this is your a uh, kind of your cream color coat so here the albedo is very high in the sense it is going to reflect a lot of solar rays compared to this blue shirt this blue shirt will observe some uh, some amount of solar rays but however compared to this cream coat it uh, it will observe more that is a blue shirt will absorb more solar rays compared to your cream shirt or uh, that's a cream coat so as a reason the cream coats albedo is more so what is the statement too? That is it contributes significantly to the global warming by absorbing sunlight and reducing surface albedo. Does black carbon reduce surface albedo? Yes, it reduces surface albedo. Say for example, there's a black carbon. So black carbon are the tiny black, a uh, tiny black uh, suits or the carbon suits that get deposited over any surface. If it get deposited over surface, what will happen? The surface albedo will get reduced. Say for example, if I put some black carbon over this cream coat, what will happen? The cream coat will start reducing the solar reflection. So because the black carbon will absorb the solar insulation. So as a reason, this statement is also right. So what about statement three? Black carbon is a long lived climate pollutant absorbing solar radiation and contributing to warming warming that's a global warming so is the statement three right that is black carbon is a long-lived climate pollutant so what do you mean by long-lived climate pollutant long-lived climate pollutant means so these are the uh, pollutant that is a uh, uh, greenhouse gases which leaves which which stays in the atmosphere for a very long time very long time in the sense uh, thousands and hundreds and thousands of years so that is your long-lived climate pollutant so do you think black carbon is a long-lived climate pollutant does the black carbon stay in the atmosphere for hundreds and thousands of years no black carbon is a short-lived climate pollutant say the black carbon will stay in the atmosphere that is will be suspended in the atmosphere or say will float in the atmosphere for few weeks to few months it is not a long-lived climate pollutant black carbon is a short-lived climate pollutant so this statement is absolutely wrong so third statement is wrong so you will get the answer is b so a simple uh, understanding about your uh, long-lived climate pollutant and short-lived climate pollutant long-lived climate pollutants will stay in the atmosphere for hundreds and thousands of years say for example your carbon dioxide or your sf6 etc these are long-lived climate pollutants but whereas your short-lived climate pollutant this will stay in the atmosphere for few months to few uh, sorry for few days to few uh, years so not not hundreds of years for few years it will stay so those are your short-lived climate pollutants 
pollutant and black carbon is a short lived climate pollutant this is the basics that you have to understand so now let us go to the next question the next question is regarding Kaveri issue that was in the newspaper today's newspaper so which of the following statement regarding the river Kaveri is right Kaveri river basin covers a part of Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh what do you think so does Kaveri pass through Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh what do you think no Kaveri doesn't pass through Andhra Pradesh the major rivers in Andhra Pradesh are your Krishna and Godavari so but however uh, Kaveri that is Kaveri passes through Karnataka Tamil Nadu Kerala and Pondicherry or say Puducherry not Andhra Pradesh statement one is right wrong so again if you see here this is your Andhra Pradesh Kaveri has Kaveri basin doesn't even touch Andhra Pradesh so Kaveri goes in Karnataka so this is your Karnataka Kerala Tamil Nadu and Puducherry or say Pondicherry. Next one is Kaveri River Management Dispute, that is Kaveri, sorry, Kaveri River Dispute primarily involves Kerala and Tamil Nadu. Is the Kaveri River a dispute between Kerala and Tamil Nadu? What do you think? No, Kaveri River Dispute is primarily between your Karnataka and your Tamil Nadu, not, not between your Kerala and Tamil Nadu. It is actually Karnataka. So this statement is also wrong. So next one is Kaveri. Uh, so what's the reason why why are we emphasizing on this topic Kaveri? Because if you see you analyze your UPSC paper, you'll get a lot of questions from the six major rivers. That is your Indus, Brahmaputra, Ganga, Krishna, Godavari, Kaveri. So Kaveri is one of the most repeated questions. So that's the reason you should know uh, uh, details about Kaveri properly. Uh, third statement. Kaveri Management Authority is mandated to ensure equitable distribution of Kaveri water among the riparian state. Is it true? This statement is absolutely true. That is the function of Kaveri Management Authority. So statement 3 is right. So the answer is A. By the way, what is Kaveri Management Authority? What's Kaveri Management Authority? What do you think? Kaveri Management Authority was established by the government of India in 2018. Why did it establish? Because there was a Kaveri dispute between uh, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu and this dispute went to uh, Supreme Court. So Supreme Court uh, to gave a verdict and so and Supreme Court asked the government to establish the central government uh, that has established Kaveri Management Authority. So as a reason government of India established Kaveri Management Authority. So who are the members of this Kaveri Management Authority? So so the members are see one representatives will be from Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Pondicherry and officials from the Ministry of Water Resource from the Government of India. So they will be the members of Kaveri Management Authority and what is the work of this Kaveri Management Authority? in order to implement the decision taken by the Kaveri Water Dispute Tribunal. So what are the, what are the decision that has been taken by the Kaveri Water Dispute Tribunal? That decision this uh, Kaveri Management Authority has to implement and what are the decision that has taken by the Honorable Supreme Court? This Kaveri Management Authority has to implement. That is the only function of Kaveri Management Authority. Is it clear? So this is the basics about your Kaveri Management Authority. Again, the, the important six are uh, uh, very important from UPSC perspective okay fine so now we'll go to the next question uh, the next question was on based on today's headlines that is uh, international uh, seabed authority which of the following statement is correct regarding the international seabed authority statement one international seabed authority that's the ISA is an autonomous autonomous international organization established under UNCLOS that is United Nations Convention on Laws of Seas is it true is ISA an autonomous body so what do you think is ISA autonomous body is ISA is an autonomous body that is established under UNCLOS. So UNCLOS is the one that, uh, so UNCLOS means it's an international agreement which monitors the jurisdiction of the each, the, of the of the coastal countries regarding their maritime uh, territory. So that is, that is your UNCLOS. So again, ISA statement one is right. That is ISA is an autonomous international organization established under UNCLOS. Statement one is right. So statement two, that is UNCLOS is responsible for the regulation and management of mineral resources in the international seabed area beyond national jurisdiction what do you think is it is it the role of uh, uh, international solar uh, sorry international seabed authority what do you think 
this is exactly the function of international seabed authority so what does international seabed authority do so the the only function or the most important function of international seabed authority is that so it will monitor the undersea mining that is this is undersea mining in the upper apart from the national jurisdiction so this unclos will determine the national jurisdiction in the maritime zone unclos is an international law that will determine what is the jurisdiction what is the maritime jurisdiction of each country if it's a coastal country coastal country in a sense which is which is uh, which has a border with the uh, uh, ocean or seas so they will unclos will determine what is their national jurisdiction in the ocean or seas and beyond that who will monitor this region so who will monitor this region this region will be monitored by international seabed authority if there is any mining activity that has to be taken place in this region that is your uh, beyond the exclusive economic zone this is your ez beyond exclusive economic zone if there is any mining activities that has to be taken play, taken by any country they have to take, get the permission from international seabed authority if the country wants to mine in this region that is up to exclusive economic zone the country can mine without without anyone's permission but if the country has to mine beyond their exclusive economic zone they will have to take the permission from international seabed authority so this statement is right so what about statement 3 India is not a member of ISA. In fact, India is one of the important member of ISA. So statement three is wrong. So statement one and two is right. So the answer is A. Is it clear? I hope uh, uh, you have got some fair idea regarding international seabed authority. So next one is regarding the municipal election. There was one very good article regarding the municipal election. So we will be taking up the question on this part. Which of the following statement is or correct regarding the municipality election in India? Statement one. So uh, municipality election in India are conducted by the Election Commission of India. So what do you think? Is the municipality election connected with the Election Commission of India? No, the municipality election is not conducted by the Election Commission of India. Municipality elections are conducted by the State Election Commission. The State Election Commission say every state will have its own State Election Commission. Say this is your UP State Election Commission, or say this is your Mizoram State Election Commission. Every state will have its own State Election Commission. This State Election Commission will conduct the municipality election and it will conduct the panchayat election. So it will not conduct. That is your Election Commission of India will not conduct. Conduct the elections for municipality. Your Election Commission of India will conduct elections for president, vice president, and your Lok Sabha, your uh, state elections, etc. But Election Commission of India will not conduct the elections for local bodies, that is, your municipalities and panchayat. That you should know. So this statement is wrong because this is not conducted with the Election Commission of India. It is conducted with the State Election Commission. Okay, statement two: the reservation of seats for women and OBC in municipality is mandated. Uh, in municipality election is mandated by the Constitution of India. What do you think? Is the statement right? The reservation of seats for women and OBC. So, in fact, the Constitution, that is Article two forty three T, mandates that there has to be a reservation in the municipality for women, not for OBC. So for women it is right, for OBC it is wrong. So the statement is absolutely wrong. The reservation of for for women is mandated by the Constitution under Article two forty three T, but however not for OBC. So this statement is wrong. So the third statement: municipalities in India are are empowered to levy and collect various taxes and fees. Can municipality uh, collect taxes, or say does municipality have the power to collect taxes? Yes, municipality has the power to collect taxes. See, it can collect taxes, various taxes like say property tax, water tax, and various other taxes. It can collect. Municipality has the power. So, municipality, the constitution has given the power to the municipalities, and they can collect the taxes. So, statement three is right. If statement three is right, so the answer has to be A. A is the answer. ठीक है? Fine. So, चलो दन. We'll go to the next one. Next one is your PYQ. Previous year question. 
certain sense the flavor of the season is election commission or sorry election election and the looks of election so we are taking up the question on the election commission or say a gen general question regarding the election consider the following statement statement one election commission of india is a five member body so what do you think election commission of india is a five member body is it a five member body as of now election commission of india is a three member body and who decides that the recent election commission appointment act was passed by the parliament that act uh, gives the power for the president to decide the uh, strength of the election commission now the power is with the president now the president as of now has decided that election commission is a three member body if the president feels that election commission should be a five member body or six member body the election president can do it as of now on date the election commission of india is a three member body so this is not a five member body it is a three member body so this statement one is right wrong so again here the power is with the president of india the president of india can decide 3 5 6 10 or whatever whatever it is so as of now it is three member body so uh, wow, oh, that is next one is uh, union ministry of home affairs mha that is ministry of home affairs uh, decides the election schedules for the for the conduct of both general election, elections and by election so what do you think does uh, home ministry decide the schedules of the election commission so recently i think two weeks back uh, the schedule for the general election commission was uh, announced so was it was it announced by the honorable home minister or say was it announced by the uh, chief election commissioner who announced the general election uh, schedules for the general election commissioner uh, general election so it was the chief election commissioner not the home minister the home ministry the union home ministry will not announce anything regarding or say any schedules regarding the election uh, election general election or say by election so it is the election commission of india will decide the schedule of the uh, general election as well as the by election so this statement is wrong so two is wrong so if two is wrong we already get the answer but so we'll see the third statement as well also the election commission resolves the dispute relating to the split and merger of the recognized political parties does election commission have so much power but anyways we got the answer but however just, just analyze this one election commission resolves the dispute relating to the splits or mergers of the recognized political party there are so many splits nowadays uh, that's happening in the political uh, parties uh, so does election commission has the power to resolve those dispute yes election commission has the power who has given the power that is the election symbols reservation and allotment order this order has given the powers to the election commission to to resolve the disputes regarding the splits or mergers of a political party so this that is the election symbols reservation and allotment order 1968 gives the power to the election commission that is to decide the disputes disputes in the uh, political parties and it was upheld by the high court as well as in various other ca uh, cases in even supreme court has upheld the powers of the election commission to resolve those disputes so the answer is answer is d here d so now we'll go to the fact of the day so the fact of the day is your great indian bustard so what is this great indian bustard it's a very majestic bird so this is a bird this is a bird it is a critically endangered bird and again it's a large bird and whose height is almost up to one meter see one meter one meter is almost say three 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 and a half feet okay it's a, it's around more than more than three feet it's a very big bird and currently it is found in few pockets in say rajasthan gujarat maharashtra and andhra pradesh very few pockets here and there we find it's a critically endangered bird there are less than 200 birds that is existing the only less than 200 birds you can you can imagine less than 200 birds of great indian bustard are remaining on planet earth as of now so it's a critically endangered one and again it is a state bird of rajasthan the rajasthan has declared the great indian bustard as a state bird 
so it's a critically endangered bird and again the most important act that guides all the protection measures for the wildlife is your wildlife protection act so great indian bustard is is a part of your schedule one of wildlife protection act so what does that mean if i put a great indian bustard in schedule one of wildlife protection act what does that mean it means that the government will provide the highest security to this bird that is highest protection is given to this bird in the sense what are the animals that is put in the schedule one of wildlife protection act those animals or say those those species will get the highest protection from the government in order to protect them so again your great indian bustard is a part of your schedule one of wildlife protection act by the way why why uh, there is a decline in the population of uh, the great indian bustard there are various other reason so one of the most important reason is that the great indian bustard collides with the overhead power line so you are seeing this power line this is the main reason and this case has gone to even supreme court and as a reason supreme court has told the power companies to install to uh, to remove this uh, the overhead power line and put it in the underground so this is the one of the main reason for the decline in the great indian bustard population and the next one is habitat loss and fragmentation so due to due to the uh, deforestation as a reason due to the deforestation and encroachment there is a habitat loss and fragmentation because because of that they are not able to get adequate feed as a reason their population has got declined and the next one is hunting so hunting uh, hunting of great indian bustard and the last one is predation of dogs predation by the dogs that is the the dogs that that uh, the the the, the, the uh, usually we find the dogs they go and hunt this uh, great indian bustards so again because of these factors the population of great indian bustard has declined and it is now the population is less than 200 in 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 uh, in on the on the planet earth so again uh, it, it's a critically endangered species so this was the end of uh, today's class so then thank you guys